second. I didn't start recording. So I'll, I'll just you know, recap a tiny bit. So last time we had talked about values, um, which are quantities which basically um, allow you to, to keep track of um, specific, uh, specific um, uh, particular values. It's, it's hard to describe. There are, uh, they could be numbers, they could be characters, they could be references to an object like a person or a string. And we talked about how expressions compute them. So expressions like formulas, which evaluate to, which produce when evaluated about. Um, and we had also talked about statements. Um, statements were different than expressions. The job of a statement is to do something, um, perform some action. They can be expressions, because um, it turns out assigning one thing to another also results in a value in Java. But, but statements um, are, are almost like commands. They tell to do something. Um, now, today we'll be talking about types as sort of determining the universe of possible values that can appear in a given place. Um, and we'll also talk about something we referred to in passing last time, which is functions, because we could call functions as part of expressions, as part of expressions and by extension statements. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll learn some about the sets of, of uh, uh, options we have when we're dealing with values that are referenced that point at particular objects and those being objects of a class. So these are all quite core concepts within, within Java, and they loom large when using Java in any level. You're always manipulating references to objects and uh, dealing with values computed by expressions, um, such as in the statement of the hazard rate to assume for a given transition, or you're putting statements in, um, handlers for for code, et cetera. And uh, you know, if we reflect on some of the models that we've built up here over the past bunch of days, um, it doesn't take long to find lots of examples of each of these, right? So, so here's uh, an expression which evaluates to a value which determines it has a word. Um, uh, here we have another Another value is determined by a variable. Um, and we did talk about variables as holding values. Um, so that was another thing we, we talked about in our earlier sessions. Um, so variables uh, of a certain type hold, hold values. And, and this is an example of it. And we refer to that as, as the, uh, the rate. Um, and uh, you know, sometimes the expressions are quite complicated, sometimes they're simple, but um, when we need a value, we can typically put in an expression. In fact, yesterday, um, Wade reminded me that when you specify the stop time of an experiment, um, you can actually specify um, for the stop time uh, an expression for that, which refers to, um, to the stop time um, so that something will fire off uh, at that time. And we, we gave an example of that yesterday. So where stop time had an expression in it computing a value, you may recall. Um, so those are examples of computing values, expressions, and, and statements here are also all around. We have statements here in these handlers. Any logic has just chock a block full of places where you put sets of statements to be executed if something fires, such as this connect, such as this transition here, or if you reach a certain point, um, such as in all these cases, et cetera. So statements, values, um, values are computed to determine things like hazard rates, et cetera. Uh, statements are there to be executed if you reach certain points. Um, we use variables because they hold values, and often our expressions will end up calling functions. And all these values are certain types. Um, 
So what we're going to be talking about last time is turns out to be, you know, pointing to the motivation for this time. Let's go though. Um, let's stand on some of these factors. The first thing is that all values come in type. So if you if you go look at any of these things, if you declare a parameter, you have to specify it. This is a double. Um, uh, this, uh, by contrast, is a type initial smoking state, which we actually define, right? Um, and uh, and there it is. We told it what the universe of values. Are. And this is actually really implemented, I'm virtually certain. I don't think I remember recently exactly, it, but as a as an enum, what's called an enum, e n u m, meaning an enumerated value. You specify a set of categorical possibilities, um, a categorical kind of universe of, of values, and um, and that's called initial smoking state, and you can use it as the type here. Um, this is a color. Um, this is something of color type. Um, this is a double again, and uh, in the past we've had integer types, etc. So all values in Java have certain types. And types associated with, and these types specify the possible values that are legitimate there. Possible specific values that could be legitimately used in a given place. So the fact that color has to be a color means you, you can't just give it a value that's, you know, a string, a, a sort of a you know, something like quote red. No, no, no. It can't. It can't, can't take that. It has to have a reference to a color, which is red. Um, so a string is different than that. You can't give it a number. You couldn't give it three point one four. You couldn't give it, you know, minus two or something like that. No. It 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 tells you what what values it can take on. What possible values it can take on. The universe of values it can take. On. This is a double precision value, and if you were to give it a string like this, or if you were to give it a reference to something, um, a reference to a person, it would comply. Um, and it's important in Java, or it's important in any logic to know where it would comply. This is something I regret not sharing during the boot camp, but you folks will, will, will benefit from it, I think. Um, so if I said here, instead of 0 0.01, if I said, you know, uh, something like, um, you know, foobar, um, uh, or I were to include a reference to someone and I tried to build this, um, it's gonna complain uh, about this. And, um, and it says can type mismatch, cannot convert from string to double. And that's telling you it, this is the wrong type. It's expecting a value of type double and you've given it a value that's a reference to a string. Um, uh, similarly, if I had put, you know, A here or something like that, the character A, it would get upset and um, not be, uh, should, should not be, not be very strange. Oh, you know what? It is actually, okay. So there are certain values uh, that uh, it's going to be a little bit more accommodating to, and those are things that can be converted into a double. But I see that this is no longer, again, it's no longer giving these uh, messages down here. So um, I'm going to, again, edit, you know, exit this and come back in because it seems like it's no longer giving that uh, compile time feedback. So give me a moment and I'll just call that up again. So all values in Java have types. It's, and uh, a given value, it knows what type it should be. Um, it will be quite picky about getting things of that type, but there are sometimes things that can be converted into that type, and it will be more accommodating for that. Um, so uh, I'm just going to put this again, and we will resume where we left off here. Okay, so um, here I'm going to go to um, Java types and, and offer some few additional remarks. Um, so we, we specify types in Java for 
a very wide variety of, of different quantities, parameters, variables, return values, um, fields of classes. And, um, and we do that for very good reason. We want, we want it to prevent us from doing something silly, from you know, accidentally telling it to do something that doesn't make any sense, um, like taking a number for a color, something like that, or a string for a, uh, for a number. Um, so it, it's quite picky. It's what's called a strongly um, typed uh, system. Um, it's a strongly typed language, uh, Java. Okay. And um, I was uh, taking a look here at a certain point, and I think it may have been, I should really go uh, see where that was, but um, it looks like uh, I lost the change anyway. But if I had said, you know, something like um, A here is what I was doing, you notice it, it uh, is going to try to do something with it, and it actually converted it automatically, as they were saying. It, it turns it into a number. So you have to be a bit careful. It can be a bit accommodating and promoting certain values of one type to another. Um, so uh, uh, if I put one, for example, one per year, it would also say, okay, I'll accept that. It's close enough. I'll turn it into a one point year. So um, Java has certain rules for the built-in types of what it can promote, what it can allow, when it can automatically try to convert from one to another. And this is important. But it's really valuable to know where it wants an integer or where it wants a double um, because unusual things can happen. And I'll, I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. Um, so when we have values of a given type, it, it really constrains not just our universe of possibilities, but also, oh, what I, um, I'm sorry, I, I meant to have these slides over here and be going back and forth between them on this screen. Um, so types are used in many different places. And when we have a type for a value um, that's needed, it influences not just the possible legitimate things that can be used as, as values, but also which operators can be used with the value. In other words, what you can do with the value. For example, things that are double precision values can be added. Things that are integers can be added. Things that are double precision values can be divided. Um, uh, and uh, you know, Booleans can be tested. You could say, if a certain Boolean is true, then do this, otherwise do that. Um, and strings. And, and references to objects in general, you can you can undertake certain actions with them. Um, we'll come back to this, but basically, when you have a reference to an object, it's a member of a class, and which class it's a member of will tell you what it can do, sort of what its repertoire, is, what its set of possibilities. Um, there is some conversion that is supported. Um, uh, between these, particularly from these uh, built-in values, these so-called primitive types. And Java has a set of primitive types. Um, um, I've given many of them here. Um, we've used many of these uh, in the course of the boot camp. Um, uh, so for example, we've made use of double precision values. Um, those, are, those are used in the context of the rate transitions, for example, um, where it, it needs this double precision value here or where it needs it here, right? Um, and, uh, and we've had Booleans. We haven't really realized it, but we've said, for example, is someone's sex female? And that returns a true or false, the Boolean true or false. Um, uh, there's also integers we've used. Anyone remember an integer which we used? What? Yeah, a number of people in a state or a number of, number of times we've seen an infection, total number of people in a population. Those are all integers. 
okay? Um, they're counts, and as such, they describe by integer. Integers, I should note, um, in Java can be negative. Um, those are actually, like when you have counts of things, they're non-negative integers, but we tend here for this programming language to just say, well, they're, they're integers um, and, and leave it like that. There are other languages or more particular, say it's what's called a natural number, uh, zero, one, two, three, et cetera. Um, so languages differ in sort of how strict they are about some things, how particular in describing things. Um, now, these are a set of built-in ones, and there are some that are close cousins of what we use, for example, longs or sort of ints that can go up to larger values or, or smaller, even lower negative values. Floats are like doubles, but they take less space and they represent with less precision. Generally, we don't, in any logic, we don't tend to make too much use of them. Um, characters are things described by, by things like, um, I, I, I gave an example of one, something like this, and, and that's, that's a specific character. Um, and again, we tend not to use those much. Strings are made up of characters, but we tend not to manipulate them much, any logic, so I'm not going to. Um, so most things that we manipulate are not primitive types. They're not these built-in types. They're types that we or someone else have added. Maybe we've added them, we've declared a person, we've declared a support dog, we've declared a you know, physician, we've declared a, 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 you know, a, a community health worker class in, in any logic set of agents called or class of agents called that. Um, that would be an example of a non primitive type. We define option lists, right? We saw that earlier. We define uh, option lists like, like um, uh, these here. We've defined our own types. Most types that we use in any logic are not primitive ones, they're not ones that we, we use these a lot, but these are not the majority that. Uh, we're using. They're a strong minority, but they're not, not the majority. Um, so non-primitive types come from two places. Either we declare them, like initial smoking state or sex with a capital S, yes. Or they're defined in, well, this says standard Java libraries, but um, but uh, actually it's it's in uh, other libraries, you know, any logic libraries. Um, uh, or others, um, other libraries. Uh, it's, it, you know, we make extensive use of any logic libraries, but then there may be other libraries too, which we may use. Um, and there are literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of Java libraries. And uh, you can readily import them for all sorts of things. GIS um, for, you know, visualization for, you know, uh, recording information in databases uh, and reading it from databases, um, you name it. There's, there's Java libraries for pretty much everything, um, uh, every computing type. Um, so why do we have these types? Why do we have these types? Well, it, we, we use them for a variety of reasons. Um, for, for us as modelers, it prevents us from making this silly mistake. Um, we may do something silly if we're not reminded of what we're dealing with. We may try to put in quote read for something um, where really a reference to a color is needed and it won't be able to make sense of this. And it, this allows it to kind of say, hey, look, I don't know what, what you're telling. And if we don't have types, where that comes up is when you run something, when you run them off. So types generally allow us ahead of time, like when I press that build button, for it to say, look, I'm not going to know what this means if you tell me that. Please go fix it. Instead of you run your model for a day, but a really big model, then it blows up and you lose everything. And that is the real risk. Um, if you don't have types, 
it can't know ahead of time there's going to be a problem where it won't be able to make sense. Types allow us ahead of time to know is this is this basically sensible um, in terms of dealing with quantities that I'm going to know what to do. Um, and uh, these things come up all the time. We may use, if we're not careful, we use a, a, a variable name like A, we forget, or P, and we forget what it means. It's a reference to a person, and, and we, we, we have used it in another context to mean a reference to a service dog, and we, we, we mess them up. Um, we, we give one thing where we really should have given them, and it helps test. Um, and uh, with types, we can find these things early. It's kind of like finding your errors very early instead of when the model's running, so the model just doesn't die um, spontaneously. Um, doesn't crash, doesn't, doesn't just go on forever. Um, so we know what we're dealing with. Um, we're clear about what we're dealing with. It, it, it tells us if there's a problem, and sometimes it seems like a problem, but it it often will it's better that we know it sooner rather than later um you can complain the computer is sometimes slow it doesn't doesn't know things good and, and that may be true but it's better that we know that it's not going to be able to understand this when we build the model rather than after 10 hours of running. um okay now sometimes there's a member of one type but it logically can be converted to another. I actually showed an example of that, uh, or two examples of it, right? Where where we had these, and um, we converted these from, you know, it it needs a hazard rate, it needs a double, and where we could give it, you know, one, and it will actually convert it to one point zero, right? Um, I could give it three; it would convert it to three point zero. Um, that it promotes it. Um, I could even give it a character and it's actually gonna turn that into kind of a unique numbering system for characters, which has been around for decades and decades called the ASCII system. Um, so there's some latitude here in converting these things. And, and there's something called type coercion, which can be done explicitly through something called casting, where we, take something we have in one form and we turn it into another. So maybe we have a double and we say, look, turn this into an integer. And it's gonna say like, are you sure? And you know, you, you really wanna throw away, like if you give me 3.14, you really wanna throw away the 0.14. You just wanna turn it into a three, you sure? And if we say yes, it'll say, oh, fine, I'll let, you, I'll let you do it, throw it away, fine. Um, it's, it's kind of like we're, we're tossing information away. Um, we can also do things like turning an integer into a string. And so if we have the number, you know, seven, um, we could turn it into the string seven. Right? Um, and we could then print it out. Um, this, uh, this goes on all the time. Um, we will do things like turn a person into a string a reference to a person into a string. So we, because we want to, we want to print it out. It, it basically converts, it basically doesn't change it. It, it says, okay, I know how to treat this like a string. I know a string that corresponds to this. So I need a string. You give me a person. I will create a string that refers to that. Um, very, very common. Um, in fact, we have shown cases of this. So, in some of our models, um, we've used, for example, this thing, trace LM. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but um, in this very model here, within the state charts, in the heart disease state chart here, I said, like, my radius uh, is this. So here we're mixing together. I'll put it on the big screen here. Um, uh, oops. Here we go. Oh, come on. Um, where is my notepad? There it is. Hey, come on. Okay, yes. Finally. Okay. So here we are saying, hey, oval. This is an expression, right? We say oval. 
That's a reference to, a, to an oval object. Um, an instance of some class, and we say, hey, get your radius, get me your radius. It gives, this is a call to a function method called on a, on a reference. That returns a double precision because the radius is, you can look it up in any logic tree. It returns a double. Um, like the radius could be 2.2, it could be 23.5, or whatever. Returns that, and then we're we're doing something a little bit unusual here, adding that to a string. Except this add actually means concatenate. So strings plus actually means concatenate. Put them next to each other. So if you add quote, you know, foo plus quote bar, it's not saying to add it arithmetically. It's saying to turn them into the string foo bar. Okay, plus means something different for a string than it does for a number. And, um, and this is basically, in order to do this, plus knows how to do something with a string with a string. So it needs to convert this thing over here to the right to a string. It's a number, it's a double. But it says, okay, I know how to turn a double into a, uh, a, a string, and I'll do it now, okay? Now, this occurs, as I say, all the time. And you can do this with persons, too. Like, watch this. Um, so, uh, so I'll say, actually, um, uh, so person, person plus this plus, you know, this radius is such and such. So now it's actually going to take this. This is a reference to a person. It's to, to this current person. And it's going to turn that into a string, too. And it's going to put it just before this. And it's going to put all these strings together. The first one was a string, and it knows it has to convert this one to a string to become something that can be combined with the first one through a plus. And it says, oh, OK, this is a string, too. So going to append that or concatenate that. And then it, this is a double, and it knows how to turn that into a string and turns them all into a bunch of strings. This is like, we, we do this all the time with, within any logic models. And if you run it, what you'll see is that printing out information on the person. So when I turn the person into a string, this is what you see. Information on that person printed out. You can could see it there. I'm going to make it full screen. There it is. Right. This is this is exactly the result of what I just showed. It is turning information. This is its rendering of a person as a string. If it has a reference to a person, it says, "Okay, I got to turn this into a string somehow. I got to say something about this person to, to know, you know, to." To characterize it. So what am I going to say? I'm going to say sort of a, I'm going to say this is the 77th person in the person at index 76 in the population where they live. This person at index 76. And I'm going to give their information on all their parameters, like their birth time. Right? Um, notice it's not giving their 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 values. It's just giving their parameters. Um, this is a person which has where where are their um, where's the uh, oh, I made this full screen. Um, so so here we had birth time. Um, it's interesting. It didn't give initial smoking set. I'm, 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 I would have expected it to, but maybe it was too long and it just flopped off to the first one or something like that. But it, it gave information on its first parameter. By the way, seeing that console, it's useful, and you can do view console to see it. Okay, so so what I'm saying is you can cast or or you can turn objects from one type often into another type. Values of one type can be converted into. Now there are times where you need to do this explicitly. And 
like where it's otherwise going to complain. I'll give you an example. Um, uh, if you want to, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of an int here. Um, where's the place that, oh, yeah. Um, okay, uh, so let's go up to this one, pain, and we have um, cumulative heart disease incident cases per month, right? That's an int, right? If we had said its initial value instead of being zero, if we had said it, you know, one, two, three, it's fine. It's fine. It lets us tell us what its initial value. Logically, it may not make sense for what our needs are, but the type system is perfectly fine if this were three or if this were minus 10. This were, you know, two. It, it's not what we want, but it's, it doesn't know that there's a type problem. You know our our burden, but we're not doing something nonsensical. If we gave this, it's not going to know what in the world to do because, like, I, I can't turn that into an integer. I can't do even if we were to say zero, it it's not going to say uh, I can snooker that into a, a into an integer. It's it's going to be particular. It's going to say no. Give me something I understand. Um, now. This is an integer. We saw before that we could turn integers like one into 1.0 1 because it's a lossless translation. It doesn't lose any information. Plusing it to some minor points with, with computer arithmetic. But if we gave it three, if we gave it 3.14 or 159, um, it's also going to complain. It's going to say like, I don't know how to convert from a double to an int because it's lossy. It, it can't automatically do it. Even if we said 0, 0.0, look at that, 0, 0.0, uh, uh, it's going to say, I don't know how to convert. It's being quite picky. It's being quite particular. No, you got to give me an integer. Don't give me the type of thing I can't convert losses, can't convert without. Without issue. Okay, so this is a pain because sometimes we do want to say, look, just throw away the stinking 14159, right? Just throw it away or, or just take this 0, 0.0 and treat it as zero for God's sake. I mean, like, like why are you being so picky? So there's a way to do that in Java. You say, okay, look, I know what I'm doing. Just Treat as an integer, okay? And what that's going to do is it's going to say, okay, <laughs> tell me to throw it away. The extra information, fine. And it's happy with it. Or I could say integer of 3.141 or whatever. Um, and I, I will do this and it's going to say, okay, I'll throw it away for you. I'm going to get three out. You give me int 0, 0.0. I'm going to turn it into zero, um, even if you do this, uh, I'm going to turn it into zero, okay? Um, even if, if you were to do this, I'm going to turn it into zero. Um, so, so it's just saying, okay, yes, ma'am, I'll do it. Uh, it's lossy, but you're saying you know what you're doing, so I'm going to do it. This is called typecasting. You don't use it a ton in any logic, but you do use it some. And you know, if you're dealing with double values, you, you turn them into int sometimes. Now, most of the time, there's a better way to do it. You can actually, if you have a double value, it turns out you can tell it like round it, round it up, round it down. There's actually a bigger repertoire. This is one way to, to turn it into a value that you're comfortable with. Okay. Um, so types describe the possible values that can go in a given place. Um, I, I wanted to talk about one other thing you'll see a lot in any logic if you start poking around. You start poking the documentation. If you start saying, what can I do with this? Or what do I get back? Um, 
you'll start to see it. If if I go, for example, to again, this is kind of ad lib, but but if I were to go here and um, and I were to say, okay, send to random connected, great. Um, if I were to ask this dot um, get connection here, um, get connected or get connections, I could get back a list of my connect. Maybe I want to go through them and find the most popular person in that, or maybe I want to find, you know, the um, the person who first in that list or whatever it is. But you notice when I did that, when I when I asked for that information, it showed me the information on what that returned. Like get connections number returns an int. Okay, I know what that is. Or if I get the network connections per agent, um, that returns a double, the number of network connections per agent. But you notice that this returns this kind of funny looking thing. See, it says like list less than less than t greater than. See that? See this thing right here? So that is what it's referred to as a Java generic. Okay. And um, I need to tell you about it because otherwise you'll see it all over the place. You'll see when you go through any logic documentation, all these functions of documentation. And if you go through there, you'll see it a lot. And I want to help sort of. Uh, make it less mysterious for you and help you understand it. So the basic gist of what this is showing is that this is what's called a parameterized type. Okay. Um, it, technically in Java, it's called a generic, um, which is kind of a opaque name. But you can, you can get a, a long distance by thinking that it's a list of something. So it could be a list of double, double. It could be a list of ints. It could be a list of persons. It could be a list of service dogs. Um, and it's not particular to any of those. It will do well any of them. It has a broad, it, it, will, it, it, it will can only do one at a time. So it won't be mixing together service dogs and doubles or people and service dogs. This particular list is either a list of integers or a list of doubles or a list of service dogs or a list of persons or a list of uh, homes or a list of, of clinics or what have you. But, but list um, can handle all of those. You just have to tell it what. And in this case, it's saying, okay, I'm going to return a list of something that's an agent. Okay. Um, now this extends is referring to something called subclassing and, and actually subtyping as well. But the basic deal is person is an agent. When we create a person, it's an agent. Home, when we add that model with home, I, I don't, don't know if you remember, but we had, we had a model down here with um, uh, this GIS model, this neighborhood model. We had schools, workplaces, and homes. For that, those are all agents too. They're all examples of agents. And so in Java, and probably come back to this point, uh, uh, there are, there's this hierarchy of things where it's called a subtyping hierarchy. In fact, this is a classic hierarchy, and I'm not going to get into the subtle distinctions between them, but, but basically it allows you to pass around a person as an agent, because a person is an agent. Um, a home is an agent. A, a school is an agent. Um, and there's a bunch of things that can handle agent things. Um, and this get connections returns a reference to a list of agents. Um, and that's useful. Uh, that's very useful. Uh, to be able to say, what are my connections? Okay, and if you have a model where my connections are all service dogs, it'll return a list of service dogs. If my connections are all, uh, return a list of agents that are happen to be service dogs. 
if my connections are all persons or turn a list of connections, all of which happen to be perfect. Now it turns out that if I get that, I sometimes will want to get out of there uh, further information, like I want to extract the first person. But in some cases, it may just know that these are people. I say, oh, look, I know they're persons, okay? There's no service dogs in this whole model. It's all persons. Or I know all my friends are persons, not friends with a service dog. So um, I'll actually treat it as a person. And I'll use the same, same sort of uh, casting to treat it as a person. So maybe this is something, all it knows is it's an agent. I say, just treat it as a person, okay? I know what I'm doing. This is a person. Okay. Anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be going into this as much detail as I could at this juncture. But the basic deal is that um, uh, we have these types that um, that that can hold lots of different types of things. Um, uh, and for example, we have a list of of persons or an array list of persons, etc. And we say that the list is parameterized by person. Um, uh, and this is the syntax. You saw it right there. Get connections, it will return this. And this is a bunch of these things that, that, that you'll see. Okay. So these are called generics. They're really handy because you can use them in all sorts of models, right? If you just had list of persons, or per person is defined in your model, you could use it in some model. And then other models, you need list of service dogs. But here you can just use list, and it can be reused in many different ways. Um, okay. Um, so this is extremely common in any model. And um, you will find that, in fact, if you do something like in any logic, if I were to ask up in main, if I were to go down main, and I were to go say monthly reporting uh, event, I want to loop through each person in the population. I could say this dot population um, and, and notice that it's going to be a, okay, so, so it actually says, okay, this is a population uh, of person. So it actually knows that it's persons. There are other contexts where it, yeah, here, like get default population. It all it knows is it's an agent list of agents, for example, or or this get population is what I was uh, thinking of. Get population. It returns an agent list. If you see that, so all it knows is it's an agent list uh, here um, uh, of something that that extends me. Um, so uh, this is actually referring confusingly to the population containing me. So I, I won't go into this. But the point is there are times where you make a call to something and it returns an agent list of an agent or an array list of agents. And then you could say, well, I know these, these are perfect. And you can use this casting. Um, wish I could go into this more right now, but time-wise, it, it, uh, it's prohibitive. So this comes up in many types of any logic modeling, like discrete event simulation. You, you have the resource pools of something. It can be a resource pool of doctors, or scopes, or procedure rooms, or gurneys, or of, you know, doses of vaccine, or what have you. Okay. Um, vaccine, enums, were the way we used to handle these things now called options. And we would declare them explicitly, but then any logic, partly, I mean, I really made the case to any logic, they need to capture this in the platform. They added option lists and the rest is history. So I'm not going to go. Okay. That's kind of been since I think it was great. Um, so those are types. Uh, I know there was a lot there, but the basic picture is value when we have a value it has to have a type and so when we have variables when we have parameters when we have or 
things that functions can return, um, many other contexts. Those are all associated with types. And types specify the possible universe of values that you can use. And, um, and types also constrain what you can do with those. Like a double is something you can add. A string is something that you can concatenate with, with other things. A string is something you can ask for its length. A double precision value, you don't ask for its length. Um, uh, but you can divide a double precision value, you can't divide the string in, in numerical terms. So um, types can be converted from one to the other. Um, and sometimes that occurs automatically, like converting in a lossless way from a, an integer as an int um, to a double. Um, so converting one to 1 1.0, it'll say, yeah. There's no loss of information. But if you're converting in other cases from something with more information, say 1.3 to an integer, it may force you, it will typically force you to say explicitly, just make this a stinking in, okay? And, and throw away the extra information that's implied. And, and it'll say, okay, fine. You know what you're doing, told me to do this, even though I have misgivings, fine. I'm going to let you do it, and I won't. Okay. So types, types come up everywhere. Oh, and then there are these generic types, which basically can handle. They're kind of like generic um, containers. Often, not not always are they containers, but in many cases they're containers that can contain lots of different types of things. Any one container contains a specific sort of thing. So it's an array list of person, array list of service dog, array list of homes, array list of schools, array list of workplaces. But, um, but we can reuse that general concept of an array list in a vast variety of different possibilities. And sometimes all it knows is that this is an array list of agents. Those are all examples of agents. And all it knows is that, and you have to tell it through that casting, that, that whole thing about saying, just treat it like this. You, this is the type you want it to be. And you say, look, you just think it's an agent. It's a person, believe me, and you can. Okay, that was a bit of a recap. Um, okay, any questions about that before I go on to the next little uh, uh, lecture? So that was a, a bunch of the content I wanted to cover, but I want to cover a couple more. Any more questions? Okay, so let's let's go. Um, switch to another set of slides and uh, and stop the recording. Okay, so my thought I was recording. Uh, here it is.